Alright, so I'm going to do a little follow up here because a student had a question about our staggered staggers text rotator, alright? Um, the idea here was that we had a few different divs, alright, we have three of them right now activated, and we would just do staggers that would bring them in and then bring them out. And the way our timeline was set up was that so once something came in, something would go out at the same time. However, when you get to the end of the line, commemorative bowls, that text has to go away fully before 75 flavors comes in. So again, everything else is sort of like we're pushing them out of the way, except for commemorative bowls there, all right? So the reason for that is basically because uh, our timeline is linear, and we can't be animating in the first thing while the last thing is animating out, all right? So let's jump over to our diagram. So remember, our animation had all the enter animations staggered in this fashion, and the leaves would be staggered as well, all right? So basically, when the second item was entering, the first one would be leaving. When the third one was entering, the second one would be leaving. Now, the problem here is that when the fourth item is leaving, nothing is happening here, okay? Um, in order for enter one to happen while leave four happens, we need these elements to be repeating independently, all right? Because right now, as our playhead is going across this timeline, we need to get all the way to the end where leave four happens and then jump back to the beginning, all right? And that's why there's nothing coming in while commemorative bowls is going out. Now, what we can do is we can give each one of these elements its own repeat and repeat delay. So the question is going to be, once we can do that, how much time is it gonna take between enter one coming in and then when it wants to come in again all right and you'll see that we have to go well let's just show you what i drew here all right so in this image here you'll see that we have the duration of a tween and the repeat delay we need is going to be this gap right here all right and you can just sort of eye it out and see that it's sort of like three times the duration and we have four elements okay so if we take the number of elements or the number of targets, which is four, and subtract one, we're gonna get the number three, okay? And if we do three times duration, we're gonna get this gap here. Let me just go turn on one more layer, and let's do fit in window. What I've done is I've created this little equation. Duration times number of targets minus one is gonna get us this gap, all right? So basically, we're gonna tell item number one or all the items that they're gonna play once and they're going to have a repeat delay that's this amount of time. Let's see how that would work in code. All right, so the way we're gonna apply this to our code is that we're going to create a custom repeat delay variable. Right now, I've gone ahead and I've created a targets variable, which is every div inside the demo, and that's everything that's being animated on and off. Number of targets is the number of those divs. We're getting that dynamically. And I have a duration value. Now, as we left things, we were using the same duration for the actual duration of the animation, the stagger amount, and also the position parameter. And what that allowed us to do was have each thing just basically come in and then leave, come in and then leave. Uh, and then we had that little gap, of course, that we're trying to fix. Um, but what that means is that I can change this one variable here to maybe 0 0.5 seconds. And then when I run, you'll see that everything gets updated and it's just gonna be faster, okay? But everything is still happening back to back as we showed in that chart. Now, I'm gonna do some code changes, but it's gonna be really annoying watching this looping animation. So I'm just gonna click there. I put a little code in here that says, uh, window on click, we're gonna pause the animation so that we don't go nuts. All right, we have our duration set up, we know our number of targets, and what I'm gonna do now is say, let repeat delay equal, and from our chart, we said it's gonna be the duration that we're using times the number of targets minus one, so if there's for targets, it's gonna be duration times three, all right? And to apply this to the code, we need to go to where we have our stagger amount here, and we're gonna change it around to a stagger object, okay? And that's gonna allow each element to repeat independently, as I showed you in that demo with the Freds previously. So here we're going to say that the each value is still going to be, is gonna be the duration, 
And then we're going to say we're going to uh, repeat. We'll say minus one for infinite. And the repeat delay is going to be repeat delay, that variable I just created. Once I've done that, I'm going to take that stagger object and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to use it right here in the second one as well. And then now when we run, we should hopefully see that it works. And look at that. 75 flavors now comes in when commemorative bowls is going away. So we've successfully created this seamless loop, or I should say there's no gaps in between the last item leaving and the first item coming back in. Now I could just say all well and good, we now have this repeating loop that has no gap. But an issue that came up was that I said to myself, what if I wanted 75 flavors here to uh, stay on screen before the next thing came in? It wasn't just one after the other, there was a little bit of a pause. Well, you may go into like the each and say, you know what, let me just change that to like two seconds, all right? So that's sort of like the stagger amount of how long they're going to be displayed. And then if I hit run, watch what happens. In the beginning, I saw 75 flavors a few times before other things come in. Um, it really sort of messes up uh, the start of things and uh, what's happening here, okay? So it sort of blows up. Let me just click. And the reason for that is that it's not just as simple as changing one little amount here, okay? Let's go to another graph. All right, here I have an image that shows what I'm talking about. After the first item enters, I want there to be a little bit of time before the first one leaves and the next one comes in at the same time. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap. So let me turn on this layer here and you'll see that we're going to call this the stagger amount. All right, That's the amount of time between an item starting its animation and the next one in the stagger starting its animation. And that stagger time is going to be made up of the duration of the animation plus the pause that I want to have, okay? And then we're gonna have the repeat delay here for each item is going to be the amount of time between it comes in and then it needs to restart here, okay? So when the third item leaves, I want the first item to come in one more time. But now I have to dynamically figure out what is this spread of time down here? Well, let's turn on another layer. What it works out to be is that it's going to be the stagger amount that I have twice, and then we're going to have, I believe, one more pause, okay? So if there's three items here, it's going to be the number of items minus one times the stagger amount, that's two, plus a pause. What am I talking about? This is all crazy talk. Well, let's just look at it this way, all right? So the stagger amount, or sorry, the repeat delay I'm looking for is the stagger times the number of targets minus one plus the pause, okay? So let's do all this in code. I'm gonna copy all of this out of animate and let's go back to our demo. All right, first thing I wanna do is where we have the duration, I'm also going to add a pause amount. So let's just do it right here. I'm gonna say let pause equal, and for now I'm just gonna say 0 0.5 so that we're exactly like that chart that I have. Once I know the duration and the pause, that's gonna give me the stagger amount from the chart, okay? We're going to say duration plus pause, and then our repeat delay is going to be everything I just copied, all right? Stagger times the number of targets minus one plus pause. Now the way we're going to use this is in our tweens, the duration is still going to be that duration, but in the stagger here, we're going to say that the each is going to be the stagger amount that we're dynamically doing. Repeat delay is gonna be the new repeat delay value. Uh, so down here, let's just change this each here to be stagger. And I think our position parameter now is also going to be our stagger amount. We don't want the targets going off screen until the duration plus pause has gone by. So. I know I've been saying a mouthful. Let's just give it a run and pray it works. All right, you see the text sort of stays on screen now for half a second before it goes away and the next one comes in and we're doing it without a gap. So let's go a little bit nuts here. Now that I have all this code in here, regardless of whether you understand it or not, I'm gonna make the duration 0 0.2 and the pause amount 
one. And let's just see how flexible this is. Let's go, we should have quick animations and then they're on screen for one second. Nice and zippy, nice and awesome. And to totally prove what happens or that it works, let's go in here and let's uncomment out the HTML and let's go back and let's just make the duration 0.5 again just to see how flexible we are. And here we go. Let's see if we loop. It looks nice. I think maybe the pause might be a little bit too long. I don't know. But now that I have all this work set up, you can now see that I can just change around these variables and I have absolute control over the timing. I'm loving it. So hopefully this helps and you can use this technique in your own projects. Check out the demo below, study the diagram, and play around with the different values. If you enjoyed this video and want to get access to all my premium green sock training, check out creativecodingclub.com. I've got a bunch of courses to help you master the green sock animation platform, and with new lessons added every week, you'll always be learning something cool and exciting. Check it out.